Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Helge Maus from Pixel Train. Today we want to start a new tutorial series, Fusion for Production. And I know that many of my subscribers and patrons asked for that and so now I have the time to start with the first block of tutorials, which is VFX Compositing in Fusion and Resolve. In this first block, I want to give you some lessons in which I show you, for example, how to install Reactor, what's the difference between using Fusion in the studio version, which is standalone, in opposite to using it in the context of Resolve, and also some basic knowledge which you need to know how to import sequences, how to import multi-channel EXRs correctly, and things like that. So I hope you find it useful. If you like that, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and you also can support me on Patreon if you like. But let's get started with today's lesson. Today we want to talk first about why do we want to use Fusion and how to install Reactor. The question I hear a lot is why don't you use Nuke? Because in the feature film area, everyone is using Nuke. And that's absolutely correct. Nuke is the de facto standard in feature film. And I use Nuke now since more than 10 years. I made a publication about Nuke. I used Nuke, I think, since version 5 or so. But the problem with Nuke on the other side is that most of my followers on YouTube or on also on Patreon are not able to pay Nuke because Nuke is a really expensive application and also the maintenance is quite expensive. So I use Nuke a lot for my projects because I used to train Nuke a lot, but the clients were always company clients. They are really seldom freelancers and so on. So I want to give my subscribers here an alternative to use node-based compositing in a professional way. And Fusion is a professional application because it's node-based. It was long time a hard competitor to Nuke. And many of the workflows which you know from Nuke, you can directly use inside a Fusion and vice versa. So the whole thinking of node-based compositing is really equal. On the other side, Fusion has also some features which Nuke doesn't have. For example, the whole motion graphics area is really good inside of Fusion and Nuke lacks this completely because Nuke is solely a compositor. What I also like about Fusion is the integration with Resolve. I know many of the professional compositors use Fusion Studio. Like I've said, we will talk about that in the second lesson where the differences are. But inside of Resolve, the Fusion page has many advantages, which you later see. So if you come from applications like, for example, Flame or Smoke and even Nuke Studio, you will see that really often you need compositing inside of a context and Resolve is a package which is extremely powerful. Like I've said, we talk about that in the next lesson. But the lesson today is now how to extend your Fusion. And the question is, why do you want to extend it? Fusion comes with a whole bunch of really useful tools and it's like Nuke, you have all the important tools here. But if you need a special tool or you want to extend your tool case, you have to do that by scripting. And Fusion is really good in extending. So you can have macros, you can have fuses, you can script directly with Lua or with Python. But this is something which artists normally don't like to do. So we have a whole bunch of free tools out there. And to install them, thanks to the guys at Stake Underwater, you have this free reactor script, which I want to present you now. So let's get started with that. If you want to add reactor to your system, you first have to download a Lua script. And you find it here on the website Stake Underwater. Stick Underwater is the friendliest Blackmagic Fusion Studio community online. It's a really good forum. So you see on the main page here, you come to the forum. You can ask anything here. This is a really good community. And here you find a button with Reactor. So it's a thread inside of the forum. And here you can see the Reactor thread. And the important thing is that you have now to find this. Download the Reactor installer. Go here and find the Lua script, which is directly, I think, here. Yeah. 
Like I've said, Lua is a scripting language for Fusion. You can now download this script. I've done that before. So it's on my desktop. Let's switch over here. This is the Lua script. And if you want to take a look into the Lua script, you see it's really well documented. And the whole thing is if you run this Lua script inside of Fusion or Resolve, it will then install Reactor for you. So let's do that now. I first demonstrate the whole thing here now in Fusion Studio. In a moment, I demonstrate the same thing in Resolve. You can go here and drag and drop your Lua script directly here into the system. And then you see there's a small pop-up install reactor version. In the moment, it's uh, 3.14, it's Pi. That's nice. And then you can install and launch it. And it takes now a while, it's downloading. And if you have a firewall running in your company, you maybe have to open some ports. That's the reason why I showed you the Lua script. So everything there is documented and you can read about that. And now you see it's updating for the first time, Reactor. So this can take a while. And after everything has now initialized, you are welcomed with this Fusion Reactor screen here. On the top, you have a little drop down here where you can see what's installed at the moment. And you see that I have nothing installed because I reinstalled it for you. Then we have new fuses. These fuses are normally newer than six days. So you can see here what's new. And you also see what you can update here. So if a fuse or an atom is newer than the version you have on your system, you can directly update it. Let's go back here to all to see everything here. And then on the left side, you have a full list here. And you see, you can extend your fusion now in many different ways. There are, for example, tools, which are nodes, which you can place here. So these are all kind of tools here. But there are also scripts which you can use and you also have things like comps and so on. So there are different categories what you can install. The most important thing then is uh, the search here at this point here. So if you know that you search, for example, for the Cryptomat extension, which you really often need, you can type in here Cryptomat and then you see, okay, here is something. And I make this a little bit bigger for you. You can select it first here. You see here the name, then the category. So it will be then under tools and mat. Then you see the version and the author, the date, which is the update date. Then we also see if there's a donation option built in that. You will see that everything here is free, but you can give a donation to the author if you find the tool useful. And then you see the ID here. Most important is the explanation here. So you can directly read what this extension is doing and where you find more information about that. So the GitHub thread, for example, and also which files are then installed. If you like that now, you can click here on this little tick or you can click on to install. And then you see the Atom is installed for you and then you can go to the next tool which you want to install and so on. Let's do some of the most important stuff which we normally use. One of these is Cryptomat. The next thing, if you work a lot with 3D stuff, you want to use the host script for splitting EXR. So let's type in EXR, for example. And then you can see here, this is the host script. And this time, this here is a script. So you don't find it under tools, you find it under scripts. So this is important that you see it here in the category that this here is a script. I will show you in a moment where you find your script. So you can tick that here if you like. And then there are many, many more useful tools which you can use. For example, if you are a fan of fake UIs, like I've said, Fusion is really good in making motion graphics. You find here a whole bunch of these tools. 
And there are also some people who are adding a lot of stuff. For example, uh, Stefan Iringer is one of these guys who are making great stuff. And he has a whole bunch of view shaders here. So you also can add these here to your system. I recommend these if you want to work in a linear workflow, for example. If you have then finished installing your stuff, what you then have to do is you have to restart your Fusion or Resolve again. So if you close that, you see that you get a message that the reactor is now updated. And so let's restart Fusion here. And now Fusion is restarted. And you now find a new menu here, which is named Reactor. So if you want to install now more stuff, you can directly go here to Reactor, open Reactor, and you see the same thing like before. It's initializing and now you have your list again. And if you now go here to install it, you see the stuff which we installed together. If you want to get rid of something, you can select it here, click remove if you like. And if there is an updated version, then you will find it here under update and you can select it here and update it. So that's the whole idea how you can do that now here. Now the question, where are now the tools? If you go here to effects, you remember we installed CryptoMat. So you see here under the tools mat, you have now a tool CryptoMat. So you can add it here. So you see, if you have installed a tool, it doesn't look different than a regular node which you have inside of Fusion. So that's one way it can look. Another way it can look, let's load for that a file. Can be, for example, here an EXR sequence. If you now open that up, you can flip it in here. And if you now see here, okay, this looks wrong. The reason for this is that this EXR file is full of channels. You see it here. And you want to have them now all separate. What you can do is you can make a right mouse click. And you see here under the right mouse click that you have a scripts area. And here you see that now this host script, which we installed, is now part here. You can click it. And then the script runs. You see here, some scripts have dialogues and things like that. And if you now click run and close, you will see that now the script runs and is splitting out all kinds of channels for you, which you then can see inside of your viewer. You also have seen that I installed the view shaders and these view shaders are part here of the viewer. So if you go here to the LUT and go one step to the right, you will see that here is a drop down with different LUT configurations and the view shaders are now here. You see a Rec 7 or 9 or sRGB. So if you click that now, you will see that you have now a color transform to see here directly the correct gamma and the image in the right space. So this is done here. Let's now install at the end of the tutorial the same thing inside of Fusion for Resolve. So let's start here Resolve. I start here DaVinci Resolve Studio, but it's the same in the free version. So no difference at this point. Okay. I go into a new project by double clicking here on the untitled. Okay. And what I then do is I switch here to the Fusion page and do now exactly the same thing. I take my Lua script here and I drag it over and you will see that you get the same dialog here and you can install and launch the same thing here. So this will take a while again. So let's wait for that. Okay. Okay, and we have now the same window like before. Let's search for CryptoMat again. Install it. Also our view shaders. And really important if you work inside of Resolve with your Fusion page, there's a special category here for Resolve. And these are the Resolve Essentials, which you can install here. You see we have uh, FBX Exporter Ultra and some other stuff here, which is quite useful if you install that. If you now have finished your installation like before, you close it, you have to restart now your Fusion or in our case, our Resolve. 
And now we can go back in our untitled project and now we find everything here in Fusion. But be aware that you can't directly work now here directly because now we are inside of Resolve and we will talk about the differences later. But I make here a new Fusion comp here only to have a comp open. And to switch into this comp, I make a double click here onto the Fusion comp so that I land here. And let's test first something. You see, we don't have a load icon here. We can change that later, but let's type loader to get one. And what I now do is I take here again my image sequence, like we had it before. Okay. And let's flip it in here. You now see that we have the same thing here. But now comes the point that you suddenly say, oh, we haven't installed the host script. We only have installed, for example, here, the viewer lots and things like that. But the host script is not there, I think. Yeah, you see, if you now make a right mouse button click, it's not there. So where do you find Reactor? And this is something I've been asked a lot. If you are inside of Resolve, you have to go here to Workspace. And here is a special scripts folder. And here you see the scripts. And here is the reactor. And you can open the reactor from here if you like. And then you see it's absolutely the same thing like we have seen in Fusion Studio. So let's search for the host script. Click here, host split exr. And that's it done. And now it's installed. Normally we have now to restart the whole thing. But you also can try to go directly here, say, give me the host script, and then you see the same dialog like before. And here are now all the notes. So I think that's enough for today. You have seen where you find everything, how the tool installation works, and how to find your reactor again, like I've said here in Resolve. It's a little bit hidden here under Workspace Scripts, but the rest is absolutely the same. I hope this was useful for you. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. And we see each other next week when we talk about the differences between working in Fusion Studio and inside of Resolve. Have a great time.